Yeah, it's your boy Dreeves. I'm back with another one, as promised. I said, I told y'all in my last video, I was going to uh, do a video, another video by the end of this month or before the month was over, and I'm keeping my word. You know, uh, you got to keep your word. You know what I'm saying? Like, as a, especially me as a man of God, but as a man, as a human, you know what I'm saying? Just keep your word. Work, work on keeping your word. I know I'm getting off subject of what this video is about. But that's just a nugget and a jewel. Always keep your word. So I'm work, I'm definitely working on that. When I say I'm going to do something from now on, I'm going to do it. I'm going to try my best. That's all you can do. But this video is called um, God Wants to Talk to You and How to Hear His Voice. So let's pray. We're going to pray. Of course, I always pray. We're going to get God in it, make sure he involved in it. And I'm not doing it on my own strength or, or wisdom or whatever. So bow your heads if you can. If not, just listen to me as I pray. Father, we just come before your throne right now. Once again, come into your presence. We just thank you that we're able to come into your presence, Father. And I ask you, Father, to give me the wisdom, the skill. Help me to be articulate in this video. Help me to just bless them with this word on how to hear your voice, Father. You led me to do this video. So I ask you to be with us. Be amongst us. Let your anointing flow. Let your power be available. And, and, and use my mouth and use my heart, my mind to teach the people, help us to continue to grow up, Father. And anything that's not in my notes, I ask you to bring it to my mind, my remembrance, and help me to say it in a way that they understand it very clear. So we just want to thank you and thank you for being present. Thank you for loving us the way you do. And thank you for having me do these videos. And we receive all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, like I said, um, it's called God Wants to Talk to You. So this, this one is good. So I'm going to get into it. Like I said, I got my notes right here. I always be reading from my notes so I won't forget stuff. But I wrote down. This video is going to take you to the next level. I'm going to be teaching you on this one. So I'm going to stay a little bit more calm. I'm going to try to stay calm because I just get excited about the word of God. Like I love God. I love his word. His power started getting on me, in me. So I just start, you know what I'm saying? I get a little hyped up sometimes, but it'd it be all good though. But I'm going to try to stay calm on this one because it's teaching you. This is just more of a, a teaching you video about hearing his voice and stuff. But once you get it, you're going to go to higher and higher levels. Once you get this, you really get this and you operate in it, you're going to go to higher and higher levels. Trust me, this deep. So I'm going to start with the scripture. It's very good to start with scripture, on, especially on videos like this on all of them. But it says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. That's John 10, 27, right? God said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I had recently heard a, uh, a teaching about that, how uh, somebody was saying how sheep, they they, they they so smart that they just know they they know they uh, shepherd voice. So so when he called them, hey, we, we rolling out now, whatever you say to him, let's go. Whenever you say it's time to feed y'all, they, they recognize his voice. So a stranger voice, if you if you talking, you try to say the same thing they master or they shepherd is saying they ain't gonna follow you. So they they very smart. I learned that sheep are very very smart, and God is saying my sheep. He used that analogy as as a shepherd, like he is our shepherd. He leads us. So he's saying my sheep hear my voice. So you got to be careful with that because people in these days, there's a lot of people saying, oh God don't talk no more, or he only talked through the Bible now. Like, that's a lie. Watch out for that lie. Because we just read in the Bible, this is Jesus talking in John. He said, my sheep hear my voice. He didn't put no time restraints on it. He didn't say my sheep hear my voice only back then. He said, my sheep hear my voice. That's for all eternity. So just know that, first of all, we established that my sheep, God's people, hear his voice. And I know them. And they follow me. So that's the first one. So the next scripture I got, Jeremiah 33, 3, it says, call to me and I will answer you and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. So God is saying right there in Jeremiah, this is before Jesus came. So in the Old Testament, right, this is the Old Testament scripture. So he's still telling us the same thing. Jeremiah is, is nobody special. So they heard his voice then and we hear his voice now. He said, call to me and I will answer you. And tell you great things and things that's hidden. It's secret things, of course, that God knows that he wants to talk to you about. So it's very important that you first know that he talks and that he wants to tell you hidden things. He wants to tell you secrets. 
So the next scripture, John, we go back to John, John 14, 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So you see the Holy Spirit, he's called the helper. So so you think about that, the helper, he, he, he will, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I've said to you. So as, as being the helper, which one of the best ways that he can help us is by talking to us. I, it, it's almost no greater way that he can help us. How can the Holy Spirit help you? What can he do? That's one of the things. So, you know, and, and that's another key thing. It's the Holy Spirit. See, God is one. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God is one. It's not three gods. It's one God. God operating as Father, God operating as Son, and God operating as Holy Spirit. So, so he is inside of the Holy Spirit, and he is our helper. And he said, I will bring to your to your remembrance all the things that I've told you, right? So it's important to know with this, this is speaking of the Word of God, the Bible. When he said, I'm going to bring to your mind, to your remembrance, all that I've said to you. So he's saying, he, he's talking about the Word of God. So you must read it. And know it first, and he will bring it back to your mind. So you got to know the word of God is very, very important that you know the word of God. You start reading your Bible, start getting to know the so you can know God's mind. You can know that all the things he said to you, because that's the first way God is talking to us through the word. When, when you're reading the Bible, it's God talking to you. So it's very important that you read the word of God. So once you got it in you, you put the word of God, it goes through your eyes, it goes in your ear, whatever way you hear it. It goes in you, and it's so much of the Bible. It's so many scriptures. It's hard to refuse our mind to remember all the scriptures. It's hard. So that's what the Holy Spirit job is. He's gonna bring it back to your remembrance. When with stuff that you put inside you, he's gonna bring it back to your mind, to your remembrance. So it's very important that you read the Word of God, so He can have stuff to bring back to your mind. Because if you don't know the Word, he, what are He gonna bring back to your mind? You don't even got nothing in you for Him to to to, to cause you to remember. So make sure you start reading your word. And if you're not reading, I would tell you, to, if you haven't been reading the word or you're just new to the word of God, I tell people, I would tell you to start in the book of John. Read the book of John in the New Testament. Start in the New Testament, I would tell you. I would suggest you. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Philippians, all the books in the New Testament. You know, and, and I'm going to do a, a study on that. Teach you how to read the Bible and, and, and things that you need to know about that. But yeah, uh, so so the next scripture, this is the last scripture I got on it, hearing God's voice, right? And and this is from First Kings. This is about Elijah. I, I I used to take breaks and reading the Bible. Lately, I've been reading my Bible every day, pretty much. But um, I whenever I used to take little three month breaks, six month breaks, I'm ashamed to say that I used to not be reading for a while. I used to always go back to this Elijah, one of my favorite stories in the Bible, one of my favorite people in the Bible. So First Kings nineteen eleven through thirteen. It, I'm just going to give you all the rundown. I'm not going to read it verbatim, but I'm just going to give you all the rundown. Elijah was on a mountain, right? Elijah was on a mountain and the Lord passed by and a strong wind passed by and broke the rocks. But the Lord was not in the wind. So you can see Elijah on the, on the mountain and it was a big wind that passed by and broke the rocks, shook the rocks. He, you know what I'm saying? But the Lord was not in the wind. And an earthquake happened, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. So an earthquake also happened, but the Lord wasn't in that, in that. Then a fire happened, but the Lord was not in the fire. So he also seen the fire too. The wind, the earthquake, the fire. But the Lord wasn't in none of those things. And after the fire was a still, small voice. Now, now, now this is very important. I'm going to continue, but y'all can hear that. Y'all understand that. After the fire, after the wind, after the earthquake, it was a still, small voice. I'm going to continue. This is teaching y'all. This is a very important point. Like I said, this is very, very important to know and remember God's voice, which is the Holy Spirit. We established that. The Holy Spirit, when, when you hear something, that's the Holy Spirit talking to you. But the Holy Spirit is God. So God's voice, which is the Holy Spirit, speaks audibly by whispering. So he whispers. It's a, it's a still, small voice. The Holy Spirit voice is a whisper. The devil yells because it's disruptive. 
right? It's disruptive to yell. So you can be trying to read the word of God and you can hear some, some kind of music. You can hear drop it, get low or anything. You can hear something that's going to be loud though. See, cause he's trying to just dis, dis, disrupt you, trying to distract you. He's trying to confuse you. So when the devil talk, he yells. That's another way to distinguish. But God gently whispers his plans. And when he comforts you and his secrets to you. So like I said, God whispers. When he talk, he, he it's a whisper. He's a gentleman. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. So he doesn't yell. A gentleman doesn't say, get out of my way. That's not a gentleman. A gentleman say, excuse, excuse me, sir. Like I'm trying to get through a gentleman. So the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He whispers. So it's, like I said, it's very important for you to know that he's going to whisper things to you. So this means you have to learn how to remain calm so you can hear him whisper to you what to do and what to say. So this, this is something I have, I, I've been learning. I've been walking with God for years now. And he, he, you always going to keep learning that you never going to reach the level where you're not learning in God. You never going to know everything. But so I'm, I, I recently been learning that. God been telling me you got to learn how to be more calm, relax your mind and stuff like it, it, it's so much stuff that be going on in life. You with the bills like the, like I said, the devil going to distract you. Oh, you got to worry about getting fired. You got to worry about paying your rent. You got to worry about bills. You got to worry about if this girl like me, if this dude like me, you got to worry about is, is these clothes nice? Is these clothes? There's a lot of stuff that that going on in your mind. That's clutters your mind. That's why another reason why you don't hear God's voice. Or you barely hear God's voice. It's because your mind is so cluttered with, with Facebook and TikTok and, and everything else that you got to learn how to calm your mind down and be calm. And, 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 and that's why that, that's when you're going to hear his voice more clear. So you so I'm learning that too. We all got to learn to be calm. You got to so when you're praying, take some time out to listen. Pray and ask God this and this, whatever you ask him. But especially if you ask him something that you need an answer to just take some time out to just be calm and listen and expect him to talk to you like God I'm waiting for you to talk to me answer me calm and, and, and you're going to start hearing his voice you're going to start honing that gift of hearing his voice so just learn how to calm yourself down and get all the clutter out with all this with worldly stuff get all that out your mind and learn how to hear his voice remember and understand this God's audible voice will never contradict his written word, right? You got to very understand that God, when God says something to you audibly, which we're talking about right now, now we, this video is talking about hearing his voice. We, we know that you got to read the word. It's very important to read the word. But the next level of hearing, reading the word is hearing his voice. The Bible comes first. The written word comes first. But like I just said, it never contradicts itself. So things he say to you audibly, is never going to contradict something he written in the word. Never. They never contradict each other. So if you hear, so if you hear this in your spirit, in your mind, forgive them and let go of that anger, right? If you hear that, forgive them and let go of that anger. You know, that's God because his word tell us to forgive, to be forgiven, right? God said, for, forgive others as, as we forgive our, he, what do he say? He say, another scripture, he say, if you don't forgive people, I won't forgive you, right? I was thinking about the forgive those as we give our debt to us and that, you know, in, in, the, in the Lord's prayer, that that one, right? I ain't going to get into that right now. But the Lord tells us in his word, if you don't forgive people, I won't forgive you. So if you hear for, forgive him, forgive this person and let go of that anger, you know that's God talking to you. That's God talking when you hear stuff like that. That's God talking. But if you hear... They cheated on you, so cheat back, right? If you hear that in your spirit, in your mind, they cheated on you, so cheat back. Get, get, you know what I'm saying? You know that's the devil, because cheating goes against God's word, right? So so, so we distinguishing the devil voice versus God's voice. If you hear stuff like that, cheat back, you know that's not God's voice. And like I said, you got to know his word. You got to know God's word. Say fornication is a sin. Commit adultery is a sin. So either way, cheating back is a sin. So you know that's not God's voice. If you hear, start exercising, right? If you hear that in your spirit, in your mind, start exercising. Remember the whisper too, start exercising. 
Do you think the devil will tell you to exercise and be healthy? You think the devil will tell you to start exercising so you can be healthy? No, you know the devil won't tell you that. And I said that one because God said in Philippians 4, 8, in the scripture, it says this. Whatever things is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent and praiseworthy, think on these things, right? So, so whatever is pure, whatever is right, whatever is noble, whatever is good, whatever is lovely, whatever is excellent, think on these things. Excuse me. Let me see what I said. So, so yeah, I was saying these things, whatever is pure and all these stuff. So whenever you hear something in your spirit or mind, ask yourself, whenever you hear something, right? Whatever you hear, ask yourself this. Is it pure? Is it right? Is it true? Is it lovely? Is it excellent? Is it praiseworthy? Right? So, so, so that, like I said, that's very important too. When you hear something, make sure you line it up with God's word. We were just saying that. God said he's telling you how to think. And he's telling you when you hear things to make sure you line it up with that. Because there's so many voices out there. So much things that people say. There's so many sayings in the world. It's all kind of stuff. And it's one of them, right? You hear this in your spirit. You hear this on Facebook. You hear this in the world. I'm going to start... I'm going to start giving the same energy people give me, right? People say things like that. Now, the question is, did that come from God? Did that come from God? Is that excellent? No, that's not excellent. I'm going to give you the same energy you give me. Is that excellent? That's that's a low level. That's not the, the same energy you give me, I'm going to give back to you. That's not excellent. That's not praiseworthy. That's not something you would give a clap on and say, that's good. That's not a good thing. So you got to be careful. Like I said, that's why you got to line up with, is it pure? Is it right? Anything you hear on Facebook in the world that people say, line it up with these things. Is it pure? Like, no. So that's how you differentiate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If it's God or the devil, right? So no, that, that's not excellent. Giving the same energy. God's love is not dependent on if we good or not. He loves us regardless and expects us to be the same way. So, so, so like I said, as far as giving the same energy and treating people, how they treat you and things like that. No, he, like I said, he's not telling us to be a doormat and just let anybody just do anything to us. And he's not saying that either. So it, it takes wisdom in these situations on how to treat different situations. But, I'm going to love you regardless if you love me or not. My love is not based on how you, if you love me or not. Because God's love is not based on that. Jesus died for us even though he knew we was going to do a lot of bad things. And, 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 and he loved us regardless. God's love is not based on our performance. It's not saying, oh, I love him because he's good. And I don't love him because he's bad. God loves everybody, even the evil people. You know what I'm saying? So. You, you, we, we definitely must understand that about God about God, and, and, and react the same way. Love everybody, even if you don't hold the door for me. And, and, and you know what I'm saying? You hold the door for them and don't hold the door for me, right? And, and you'll be like, man, that's cold, whatever. That's messed up or whatever, right? But if you if you, you outside and, and you didn't hold the door for me and I see you need a jump in your car, I'm still going to give you a jump. You know what I'm saying? I'm still... If, if you need to borrow some, I'm still going to be here for you. I mean, it's not treat, I'm not treating you based on how you treat me. That's not how we do it in the kingdom of God. And that's not, not how God operates. We love everybody, even the racists. Like I made a video about that. Even if you say you nigger, you come to a white person, come and say you nigger and all that. I still love you. Hey, bro, God bless you. I want the best for you. That's a high level in God. But this is how God wants us to think and act. Now, so, 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 so. So I just taught you first. These are things I taught y'all so far. And, and like I said, this is the next level of teaching right here. This is the next level. Hearing God's voice is a high level. This is the next level. The first level is get, getting the word of God, reading the word of God, the written word. That's the first level. The next level is hearing his voice because his voice is unlimited. The, the word stays the same. The word, you can read the word 
and know all the word very much. But the next level is God telling you things that's that that's that's gonna really help you and that's really gonna direct your life and guide your life. Like I said, the, the written word tell you to be a good parent, but the audible voice to tell you exactly the, the audible voice that may tell you don't whoop your kid this time. You think the best thing to do is whoop them this time. But God, the audible voice will say, don't whoop them. Just go in there and talk to them. A ask them why they're doing what they're doing. So the audible voice will tell you things, how to be a parent. It'll tell you how to be a good husband. The, the, it'll tell, the, the, the word of God, written word says, husbands, love your wife. But that's so vague. It's, it, we, it, we don't really know. So we need the Holy Spirit to tell us how to love your wife. It may say, she want to sleep on this side of the bed. Let her, right? It, the, the Bible don't tell you that, though. It just tell you love your wife. But the Holy Spirit is going to tell you the next level stuff of particular details and stuff of how to do these things. So, so, so like I said, I just so, so you were just taught. God does talk, right? So we know my sheep hear my voice, right? So God does talk. We know that. Right. So you so so you like I said, don't be deceived on that. Don't let nobody come and deceive you and tell you God don't talk no more. Don't believe that he talking. He always talk. He want to talk to you. And matter of fact, what else do God got to do besides talk to us? Think about that. What else does he has to do in heaven? People are playing and, and, and happy and all that. Right. What else do God got to do? The angels, the angels. They don't really need to talk to God about nothing. God got angels around us. He talked to the angels and tell them to go do such and such. Go protect this person. Go do this. He talked to the angels. But what else do we got to do? The angels is assigned to us. So I'm not going to say we more important than the angels in that way. But they they was made for us. They was made to protect us. So God has nothing else to do but to talk to us. He wants to talk to you. And the individual, he wants to talk to you. That's why he got me doing this video. So, so don't never believe that God don't talk. Don't believe that lies from the devil, straight from the devil. He talks audibly to you. Just the question is, are you hearing his voice? So, so, so that's the first thing you was taught. God does talk. My sheep hear my voice. No time limit on that. My sheep, meaning his people. That's what he's saying. My people hear my voice. He didn't say my people know the scripture. He said, my people hear my voice. That means God has a voice and he talks. And, and, and the next thing, right? He was taught. His voice is a whisper. And he whispers. So remember that. God whispers. He doesn't yell. He whispers. And that you have to know his mind by reading his word. To know when you hear something, if it's from God or the devil. By How you know that? We, we, we went through that. By saying, does this line up with God's word? Is it good? Is it righteous? Is it lovely? Is it excellent? So that's how you know if it's from God, what you what you hear is from God or the devil. Because you line up with his word. If it says, if you hear something and say, go punch that, go punch, bro. Go slap them. It, 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 does that line up with God's nature? Going to slap somebody, going to punch somebody, going to cuss somebody out, go cuss them out. You think God will go tell you, go cuss them out. Do you think God the Father will go tell you to go cuss somebody out? No, he would not tell you that. That is the devil, and that is your own flesh, your own body that want to feel like you should go cuss somebody out. That is not God's nature. God doesn't cuss. If Jesus was walking down here, you would never hear him cuss saying, be this, and, 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 and you hoes. And you, God don't talk like that. So God doesn't cuss, and he wouldn't tell you to cuss. So you, you got to line up everything you hear with God's word, his nature, his mind. And is it good? Is it lovely? Is it holy? Is it excellent? Is it praiseworthy? That's how you know what you hear is from God or the devil. So so, so you learned all these things. And, and I'm going to tell you all a little bit about myself, right? Because you need to know the uh, people... The people that's giving you a word, you need to know a little bit about them. You need to know, is, is, is this person really following God? Is they righteous, right? So for me, I'm going to tell y'all, like, for me, I hear God's voice every day, right? And it's because my office is a prophet, right? I'm a prophet in the Lord. So I hear his voice all the time. 
And my main gift that I flow in is the word of knowledge, right? That's a gift. It's nine gifts of the spirit. And I'm going to make a video. God got me. I, I already wrote the video down, so I just got to do it and record it. But it's gifts of the spirit, right? And I'm going to teach y'all about that. But the, but but the So one of them is the word of knowledge. And that's what I flow in mainly. That's the main gift that I flow in. And I hear God's voice every day. And at the beginning of this year, God told me something through a word of knowledge. And that's what he said to me at the beginning of the year. It was, it was around January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, somewhere around there. He just randomly just talks to me and he said, he just what he said to me. He said, do you know where people pray the most at? And I, you know, I sat back and thought for a little bit and I was just like, no, nah, I don't really know. And God said, in hell, they pray the most in hell. This is what God told me. And I was blown away because I started to think about it, though. I really started to think about what he was saying to me. I was at work, actually. And God told me that when I was at work, I was just working and he randomly just tells me things. So I hear his voice. Like I said, so I said, I was sitting there just blown away and, and it was making me so sad though. Like I started to really see it because, because, because the people in hell though, they burning, they on fire and they, is worms crawling out of them. Look at the video about that, but I'm telling y'all a little bit more. It's good to hear the same thing over and over about God. Worms crawling out them in hell. It's it, 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 it smells so bad. This fly trying to disturb me. That's the devil. But it, it, it's, it's, it's the worst smell you can imagine. It's, they tired. They hungry. They thirsty. Right? So what they saying in hell, they praying to God now. When they was on the earth, they wasn't having, they didn't want nothing to do with God. They was racist. They was rapists. They was murderers. They was liars. They was adulterers. They didn't want nothing to do with God when they was on the earth. But when they died and went to hell, they saying, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, God. I'm so sorry. Let me out. Please get me out of this place. Now they praying. So everybody in hell is praying because they know God is the only way out, but they will never get out. It's too late now. So God is telling me to tell y'all that so you won't be that person. God don't want you to be that person. So make sure you say then you believe in Jesus. Make sure you make Jesus your tell God, I make Jesus my Lord and Savior. I believe you sent Jesus into the world, this world, to die for my sins. I, 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 I ask you to make him my Lord and Savior, to come into, come, come into me and live inside me. And, and that's all you got to do. You just got to believe in Jesus to not go to this place called hell. Repent of your sins. Ask God to forgive me for all my sins. All the things that I did wrong that you don't like, forgive me. I, I ask the blood of Jesus to cover me and cleanse me from all my sins. That's all you got to do. We go to heaven by faith, not by doing good things. We go to heaven just by believing in Jesus. Jesus did all the work, all the pain he took on the cross. All you got to do is believe and receive him. That's all you got to do. That's your part. And once he come inside, living inside you, you will begin to change. You will begin to change because his nature is good and he makes your person good. So that's what you, so that's what you want to do. But you don't want to go to hell. You don't want to be this person praying now. Pray while you alive. Pray while you can. Talk to God now. Tell God how much you love him. You thank him. Ask him to help you be better. Ask him to help you with your job. Be a good, better parent. All these things. Talk to him. Just talk to him about everything. He waiting for you. And, and like I said, like this video is telling you, like God is telling you in this video, he wants to talk to you, though. That's the most important part. You can pray all day, but you want to hear him what he say, because what God is saying is more important than what you say. It's more important than what anybody say. So you want to be able to start to hear his voice. And he wants to, he desires you. That's why he's telling you this video. So I'm going to tell you all a few more ways God speaks. God speaks to pastors. People talk bad about pastors and all that. We know it's some, it is some fake pastors. It's some false ones. It's some bad ones. But but don't bunch all the all pastors. You know what I'm saying? So God talks to the pastors. That's why he set up the pastors there. That's why he put them at the church. So he can teach you. He he's he, he been walking with God longer than most people. You know what I'm saying? So he God talked through the pastors. God speaks through pastors parents right god th talks through parents so parent got authority over the kid right so god god speaks to the parents 
Parents will tell you, stop hanging out with these people. Come home at a decent hour. That's God talking to you. He's trying to keep you safe. So God talks to parents, through people with an authority over you. God speaks through dreams and visions, showing his plans for you or warning you to stop doing this. Right. So he, he speaks through through dreams and, and, and tell you sometimes his plans for you. Sometimes you will see or visions. You sometimes you would just see a vision of yourself on stage. Right. So God is showing you a vision of you speaking to crowds or something or he show you a vision of you working on cars. He show you vision of you working on animals, just his visions he has, or dreams. You'll see these things while you sleep and you would just, you know, you'll be seeing a lot of these things and stuff or dreams. He's warning you to stop doing things, right? He'll tell you to stop doing things in dreams. He'll warn you or stop hanging around certain people. So sometimes he'll warn you like that through dreams and visions, right? But, but, but dreams take sometimes dreams, Interpret them take maturity, though. A lot of times, because I think about Joseph, right? J Joseph had a dream and Joseph saw the cows, right? He saw in his dreams, he saw. Um, no, it wasn't Joseph's dream. It was it Joseph's dream? No, it was Pharaoh's dream. And, 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 and Pharaoh couldn't interpret it. So he needed somebody to interpret it. So what Pharaoh saw in the dream was a, a fat cow, a fat cow rose up. And then a, and, and, and after that, he saw a bunch of skinny cows, right? It was a lot of fat cow, cows. And then, and then later on, he saw a bunch of skinny cows and he was woke up and he was perplexed. Like, I really don't understand what he kept having that dream though. So he, he needed somebody to interpret it. So that sometimes dreams are hard to interpret. So Joseph was able to tell him what, the, what God is telling you is that it's going to be seven years of prosperity when everything going to be growing in the land. And then after those seven years, it's going to be seven years of famine. Ain't nothing going to grow. So Joseph told him, you need to save up in these seven years while everything is growing. You need to stockpile everything. Cow, I mean, corn, vegetables, all stockpile stuff. Because after seven years, it's going, nothing going to grow. And you're going to be able to need all that food. So sometimes dreams take maturity to really understand what God is showing you in a dream. So you need to ask God, like, what are you showing me? It takes a little bit more maturity in dreams sometimes. Sometimes they clear, but God, I'm just letting you know, God speaks through dreams and visions. He speaks through apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and some of them may be homeless. So always listen and never judge based on appearance, race, or gender, right? So he talks through all these offices, apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, pastors. He speaks through all these ways. And like I said, some of these people may even be homeless. You may see somebody homeless or not the type of person you would want to listen to. But for me personally, if somebody tell me God said something, the whole world stops. For me, I'm listening. I'm I'm zoned in. God, what did he say? And then again, like we said, I'm lining it up. Was this, is, is this God's nature? Is this God's character? Does it go against the word of God, what you're saying? Right? So that's how you can know. And, and that's how you need to hear his voice for, for yourself. You need to hear his voice for yourself and ask God. If you're not sure what this person saying, God told me this to say something to you. Ask God, God, is you saying that to me? And like I said, never judge based on appearance. Don't judge a person's appearance. Right. Now you can choose who you date and all that. That's a different subject. But don't don't dismiss somebody because how they look. Because God comes like that he can uh, he, he can disguise himself as a homeless person and come down here himself or angel does that sometimes so don't judge people based on how they look and stuff don't treat people different based on how they look or they race or all that like we don't do that in over here in the kingdom we don't judge people by race and all that we don't do the color black white mexican we don't do that we love everybody we love each other in the kingdom or gender right so don't think or female or she a woman. I ain't listen to her or men and all that. We don't do all these gender wars in the kingdom. So he speaks by giving you peace about a decision you praying about. When you have God's peace, that's him saying yes. So that's just another way God talks. He talks by giving just a certain sense of peace that I got about this decision that I'm praying about. Should I take this job? And God will just give you this overwhelming peace. You will feel his peace. That's him saying yes. But if you feel confusion about something you're praying about, that's, that's, that's a no. 
that's a no because God, the devil is the author of confusion. The Bible say, God is not the author of confusion. The devil is. The devil works through confusion. So if you confuse about something, that's not a yes from God. But peace, that's him speaking. So sometimes he speaks through peace. We talk about hearing his voice, but sometimes he speaks through just, just giving you peace. So understand you have a major advantage over the world and non-believers. When you begin to hear God's voice and able to distinguish between him and the devil and even your own thoughts, right? So you got a major, major advantage over the world. They don't have God's voice. They, they can only they can only read books and they can only go use their own mind and use their own limited little brain that they got. But you got God's voice. So you got a major advantage over the world and the non-believers. Us as believers, we got a major advantage over them if and when you're able to hear his voice. See, when you hear his voice, when he tell you secrets about things, he whispering these secrets about this, how you do your job better. This is how the machine work at work. This is how to get more production done at work. This is how to make the fries better at work. Put a little bit more salt to them. We got this major advantage to, to everything in every area of life. This is how you make kiss your woman better. The guy knows all the secrets to everything. We got a major advantage when you begin to hear his voice. He can tell you things like, no, I, I skipped the line. He wants you to get to a point with him when he can tell you things like, go downtown to such and such street. He may say, go down to Market Street and you will see a guy named, let's just say Mike. God will tell you, go down to Market Street and you're going to see a guy named Mike and he about to kill himself. Go tell him, I love him and I got some great things for him to do, Right? This is, like I said, this is the really next level. When he began to tell you things like that, he tell you the exact street where somebody at, where they're going to be at. He tell you their name. God only knows everything. He knows everything. So he wants to tell you all these things. God wants to tell you these secrets. Or he'll tell you, this is your wife or this is your husband. He'll tell you their name or he'll just tell you like you're praying about it. Like God, and you say, yes, th that is your wife or no. That's not your wife. You would know if he tell you no, you would know to cut that off. Like stop wasting time with that. That's not your wife. That's not your husband. So you want to get, get us to a high, high level in him. Like I said, it's levels. It's levels. You'll go higher and higher level. You'll start hearing little things here and there, but you keep growing in him, keep obeying him, keep talking to him, keep reading your word. You will get to the point where God is telling you some, some amazing stuff. Like he'll tell you to go buy this property. Like go, go in there and, 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 and or he'll tell you that he'll tell you that this person going to give you a hundred thousand dollars. Go to this meeting tonight. And when you get there, it's going to be a person that's going to give you a hundred thousand dollars like this high levels. God wants to do those things, but he can't do those things for us because we can't hear his voice. We so focused on hip TikTok and listening to music and and, 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 and little little, 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 little baby them. And all this other stuff, like I'm not, you know what I'm saying, taking shots at nobody or nothing. I'm just saying, whoever it is, whatever we're doing, that's what I'm saying. We so focused on on Facebook and Netflix and 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 chasing after women, chasing after men, you know what I'm saying, that we, we got no time to hear his voice. That's why we're not growing and that's why we're not elevating. That's why you're not elevating us. You're staying on the same level. I'm telling you all the major advantage that God's people got over the world. With your own mind, you only limited. You can do some things. With your own mind, you can read books, you can accomplish some stuff. But if you're hearing his voice, it's no comparison. It's no comparison to somebody hearing God's voice because they got the almighty who knows everything. They got a major advantage. We got a major advantage by being able to hear his voice. So God, and like I said, I'm going to go back to me. God told me one day, this, I'm in Georgia right now. I was Before I came here, I was in California. I needed a job. God told me. Go to this company. He told me the name of the company, Pacific Company. Go to this company, and they're going to hire you on the spot. And, and I went there, and they hired me on the spot, just like he say. So this is the last thing I'm going to say to y'all. His voice. Last thing about his voice, right? Whatever he says always comes true. That's another way to know when God says something. When God says something... It's going to come true every single time. If God tell you you're going to die tomorrow at 358, 
at 358, you ain't going to make it to 359. You're going to drop dead. You're going to be dead. If God tells you to stop this stuff or I'm going to punish you and you don't stop, the punishment is surely coming. If God said that's your husband, that's your husband. Even if this person is in a relationship with somebody else at the moment, that's going to be your husband. It, it, everything God say is true. So that, that, that just understand that. Be blessed. I know this blessed y'all. I want y'all to listen to it again. This is a teaching. Like I said, I probably didn't get all excited in this one, but this, this video is very important. This is the next level. Like I said, the first level is reading the Bible. That's the first, that's the first level. Reading the written word. The next level is hearing his voice. It's an it, it's another level. It's, it's things that not in the Bible that he can tell you that he wants to tell you. So many secrets, so many hidden things, so many of his plans that he got for you, so many plans that he got for other people. He want to tell you things about go tell this person this and that. Go encourage this person. Go tell this person when they was four years old, this happened to him, but they need to let it go and get over it. It's a lot of things God want to tell you and tell us, but he can't, like I said, because he, he limited because we don't give him no time. So just understand he wants to talk. He does talk. He has a voice. And he's talking to me, talking to many of us. But it, you, you, you just got to learn how to hear his voice. And remember, it's a whisper. He's going to whisper these things to you. So you got to learn how to be quiet. I love y'all. Be blessed. Pray about this. Ask God to start speaking to you. And, 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 and ask the Holy Spirit, let me to hear your voice. Remember, the Holy Spirit is God. So, so, so just talk to the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, help me to hear you. What are you saying to me? Let me teach me how to hear your voice. I haven't heard your voice. Teach me how to hear. Just talk to him. And he wants to. That's why he's telling y'all the video. He's doing this video because he want to talk to you. So be blessed. I love y'all. Stay blessed. Get in your word. And go to that next level. Go there, y'all. Go there. Love y'all.